Okay guys, so today I wanted to show you warm and natural needled cotton batting. The reason I decided to try this batting is I am going to be doing the McCall's M5598 Kwit Designs totes. Um, and I wanted to have a batting. I don't like using buckram. I don't like having interfacing here and interfacing there and smishing it together. This I want to try and see if maybe just this is adequate or, or a little better than adequate. All right, so unpacking this, it basically says you can pre-wash should you desire. I don't think it's a necessary step. Um, honestly, I'm not going to. Then if you don't do that part, the next is where it talks about the fact that it does not separate or bunch. It doesn't have resins or glues. Uh, it will not beard. I don't know what this means, but I'm assuming it has something to do with a quilt. Leave up to 10 inches open means nothing to a non-quilter. You can use it as an exterior craft fabric and you can use it as an interior craft fabric. Uh, works really well for soft sculpture. That's kind of what I was looking for. It appears to have been made in the USA, another plus. So it is 72 inches by 90 inches or 1.83 meter by 2.28 meter. That is basically a twin sized bed, possibly on the small side. I like the way it's packaged. Um, I think I could reuse this if I needed to to keep it, you know, clean and dust free. Um, it does have good care instructions. So if you've never tried anything by the Warm Comp, this might be a good starting point. It wasn't that expensive. I'll try to remember to link it below. But now I'm going to open it because I want to make sure it doesn't have an odor. Okay. So I'm going to only cut one side of this bag. I literally smell nothing. <laughs> you want to try? I, d I smell nothing. I mean, it doesn't even have a... Mm -mm. Well, to be honest, I smell this because this is what I use to keep my hands soft. But, no, I mean, it smells clean. It just doesn't have, like, a fake clean. So there we go. All right, that is where I am with that. And having said that, I checked, and the pattern and the three fabrics, I believe, all three are supposed to arrive tomorrow. The pattern may have already arrived. I need to go check the mailbox, but the fabric's pretty much on schedule for Friday, August the th uh, 14th. In any case, I am now going to go and get the tablecloth off of the table. I wanted to show you some pictures. Um, this piece right here, let's see if I can get this to... This right here was not touching the floor, and now it's just puddled up. It's like it just kept creeping down, and it's just puddled onto the floor there. Um, let me get the next one. This was on the other side of the table. That was not touching the floor. And as you can see, the weights are still on the table. I have not moved this at all. This is literally how much it has relaxed. Oh, there's my blueberry apple pie. Um, let me get, there's more here. Oh, there's, look at that. Look at that massive amount of just puddling up on the floor. So, I'm, I'm, and it, there's, right there, I have not moved the weights. 
not an inch. So I'm going to go pull this off of the table and get it in here and um, see what we can do. I do think I need to press it. Pressing, it depends on how you do it. I'm just a quick little refresher on that. Steam can shrink your fabric. Pressing, if you are moving the iron onto the fabric, you can stretch it out of shape depending on what, you know, if you're going with the grain, the straight grain, if you're going against the grain, if you're going at a, a you know, 45 degree angle on the bias. Um, so the iron can either be your friend or your foe, and it depends on how you use it. Now remember, if you recall, I did not press the seams. I decided to just let it relax without any help from any heat from the iron. So as soon as I finished it, I just took it in there, put it on the table, put the weights on it, and left it. Now, before I do any more sewing, I do need to, to take care of those seams. Um, I need to decide if I'm going to fell them, and that would be one, two, three, be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight current seams, and then the big long seam down the middle. And you know, frankly, felling those seams I think would be a really bad idea because it's on a table. And like right here, there's a lot of fabric. It's thick in some spots. It goes up and then it goes down. If you put your dinner glass on that, you kind of have a, you know, a situation like this. So I think I'm not going to fell the seams. I'm just going to go ahead and press them open and um, leave it at that. I may zigzag them. We'll see. In any case, that's what I'm going to do when I come back. All right, I have returned. I had a couple things I had to do. Not the least of which was check the mail and I the pattern for the uh, K-Wit design purse tote has not arrived. Anyway, so as I was pressing out the seams on the first panel here, I came across one that I need to work on. It I evidently failed miserably. Which, you know, that's why we check before any of the other major construction happens. So the point in my telling you that is, I remember, I think in the first video, I was talking about the fact that this is where the these holes here, that are clearly visible, sorry about that, clearly visible, let's get this to focus at some point. Give it a reference. Oh, I don't know if it's focusing or not. But there are holes. And the holes, interestingly, this is actually the right side of the fabric. But you can't really tell. The only way you know is if the holes are poked in this way, this is the right side of the fabric. If you can feel little bumps... On the other side, that's the wrong side. That's a really good way to tell if you're looking at fabric and you have to know if it's the right side or the wrong side. There you go. That's a clue right there. But anyway, so this is where the fabric was attached to the frame as it was being put together. And I don't want those holes visible on the right side of the tablecloth. So my seam on this, which I should have known because I did it on the other one, needs to be big enough to encase that row of holes. So I'm going to restitch this one, and that should be the only one, if I'm recalling correctly, because I already did the other one during the first phase of construction. All right, so a little bit bigger seam allowance just to hide those holes. They don't need to be visible. So I'm in uh, my default setting of uh, my stitch length of two. 
straight stitch, needle down, and foot number one on the Bernina. pieces of fabric. One is um, for the left side of the table, one is for the right side of the table, and I need to decide which edge I'm going to use to attach the two together. And when I'm working with something of this size, um, it may seem like a waste of thread. However, thread my time. So if I baste these two together first and then I go check it on the big table and there's an issue, then I only have to remove either all of the basting threads, which is super easy, or a section of the basting threads which usually you just do that if you're working on the hem and right now I'm not working on the hem right now I am working on that center seam alright so this is the, t the edge that will be stitched I did think that maybe it would be worth noting that I am pinning with my seams together at the top and I'm making sure that they are in perfect alignment a above all else that to me right now in this case is the most important part of the project that's what I will probably be messing around with if I don't get it right So, that looks pretty good. I just want to make sure that this seam is sitting right on top of this seam. So now I am going to baste, which means my stitch length will be all the way up to 5 on the Bernina 1080 Special. So I'm going to go slow, I'm going to take my time, there'll be a lot of weight pulling on the side over here and I don't have a lot of room to kind of help hold that fabric so I will be constantly shifting and moving and shifting and moving. So we'll see how it goes. Um, once all of the basting is done, I'm going to go check it out on the actual table and then there will be basic work that I need to do. Um, if it works, if it fits, if everything looks like I want it to look, then I'll bring it back in and then just completely restitch with a 2.0 um, default setting on the sewing machine. Remove the basting stitches and then give it a press and then I'm going to go look at every one of these seams. stitch. I had to pull that out because there were a couple of spots where the seams did not match. And off we go. Okay. 
Okay guys, so here it is. It's on the table. It's just been basted across that center seam. Obviously it's got work that needs to be done, but I'm quite happy with it. Each of the seams meet. That might be hard to see. Let me That one's off a little bit, but I think it's so tiny. All the rest are just bang on. Yeah. Yep, we're good to go. Okay, so I thought I'd let you see it. Um, obviously, it's getting late in the day, so this is going to be more than a two-part. It'll probably be a three-part.
Basically, you're just doing a spider web rose. If you have any questions about silk ribbon, how to use it, when to use it, where to use it, let me know. Um, I'm just kind of slowly picking away at this. I do need to get some more floss. I need um, a few more colors to kind of fill this out the way I want it to be. So, um, the uh, news is... I noticed today when I was sewing oh, with George that the table peg has broken off in the receptive area over here on this part of the arm of George. So I don't know if there's anything that can be done to fix that. As far as the mechanical part of sewing, not really a problem. Unless you're sewing something with a massive amount of fabric, like I am with the tablecloth. And then what happens is this is rocking like this. That really does mess with the stability because as I'm sewing, I kept wondering, what am I doing that's causing my fabric to slip like this because what's happening is this is supposed to be completely flat and then the fabric would just go smoothly across the surface but because it's tipping like this with the slightest bit of pressure the fabric is slipping like this so while I may start out with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and I'm just using 5 8 of an inch as an example but whatever seam allowance I start off with, eventually it's going to creep so that I'm on just the very edge of the fabric. And I kept trying to figure out, was it the position of the sewing machine? Was it the position of me? What in the world was I doing? And then I realized it's the table is just ever so slightly, it is held back here and here and of course this peg is still intact um, I did check to see if I could remove it if I could just push it out but this area where the pin is embedded um, is solid so I wasn't able to access that particular area but I just um, I wanted to point that out I am tomorrow going to go ahead and try I will attempt to continue sewing the tablecloth. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the table. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, um, if you want to see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell that appears so that you'll be notified when I do another upload. I try to upload every single weekday. Thank you again for watching. I do appreciate the fact that you stopped by and I uh, hope you have a great evening.